how is everyone going? How is life, the pursuit of happiness? Welcome to another Traveling Clat live stream, where today we discuss the craziness in the Middle East and the today insanity. We discuss the craziness. Oh, that's a nice feedback loop right there. Uh, we're going to discuss the craziness in the Middle East. We're going to discuss Iran. We're going to discuss Hamas. We're going to discuss. Oh, we got a lot to discuss. We've got a lot to discuss, folks. Um, first of all, where are everybody watching from? Hit me up with a little chat. Let me know where you guys are watching from. How's everyone doing? And welcome to the stream officially right now. We're beginning. Um, yeah, let me know where you guys are watching from tonight. We got Jennifer Kramer watching from NYC. HD's watching from San Francisco. Jason's watching from Boca Raton. Jack's watching from Huh. I don't know where Huh is, but but now I do. Um, Andres is watching from NYC. The Truth is watching from Ola. Yusuf is watching from Florida. What's up, Yusuf? D's watching from Johannesburg. Cool Dude Wens watching from Deerfield Beach. Doron's watching from Indianapolis. David's watching from Melbourne Straya. The Vayne Network watching from Jersey. Wiki is an Israeli in Canada. Much love. Well, much love back to you. Welcome, everybody, to the stream today. We've got some interesting topics to talk about tonight. Atheist Gamers watching from Sweden. Thanks for watching from Sweden. And thank you to all of our members who are watching here right now. We've got Shayna's here, our amazing moderator, and the police of anti-Semitism in the chat. She's going to catch all the anti-Semites. Um, so thank you to Shayna for being here, for being a member. Um, we got BT's here. Sarah K is here, a beautiful member. We've got HD, a beautiful member. We got Chrome, a beautiful member. Atheist Gamer, a beautiful member. They're being becoming another beautiful member. Um, Zohar, you'd be happy to learn that I just had a little interview with the uh, host of the Bad Jew podcast, and hopefully I'll be on that podcast very soon. So I know that you were recommending that I go on the Bad Jew podcast. I also want to give a shout out in the beginning of this uh, in the beginning of this live stream to Flunko, Flunko, uh, friend of the show. He's always in the chat. Has um, he's going to help us hopefully uh, hopefully scale up the show a little bit when it comes to audio quality and the call ins. Um, I also want to let you guys know, please, 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 please join our Discord by hitting that link that I dropped in the live chat. We'll be taking calls a little bit later. And after the stream tonight, anybody who's interested, I'll announce this a few more times during the stream. Anybody who's interested, feel free to join the Discord because after this live stream, we're going to be hanging out in the voice chat room of the lounge channel of the Discord. So basically, it'll be an open room for all of us to discuss and talk. We're trying to set up my Discord channel today to be a more productive place for conversation. So feel free to hop in there and we can actually discuss face-to-face -face some things after, um, after the show is over. We'll hop in there and we'll just have a casual chat. We'll talk about some ideas of how we can grow the Discord channel. It'll be really nice. Um, so that's very exciting. And I think we can kick off this episode tonight. Um, I can tell you guys where I've been the last couple of days, what I've been up to. So... I was working with an organization called Sharaka, who brings in Jews or uh, Muslims from around the Muslim world um, to Israel to show them the truth of Israel. And um, it's a really exciting and beautiful organization. And, uh, and, um, and I loved working with them. We, we traveled to the south of Israel yesterday, actually me, Barak, and Revital from uh, Indian and Israel channel. And we were showing and, and, and looking at the reactions of these amazing Muslims who had the courage to come to Israel during this crazy time to see all the horrific things that happened on the 7th of October by Hamas. Um, it was an interesting experience. It was really, really cool. Um, Sharaka is an amazing organization. I highly recommend you guys check out. And uh, it was my second time going down south to see what happened in the south of Israel. I can't say that it that it is a good experience or that it's any easier the second time around. Going to the site of the Nova Festival is truly horrific. Even the second time around, it's just god awful. It's like very very hard to experience and see that. But um, 
But it is what it is. And uh, I carry it around with me now every single day, as I always do. It was good to go and be refreshed again and to see it. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a crazy experience. Anyways, we've got crazy news coming out of Israel. I want to report on a bit, a bit of the news we'll discuss, and then we can sort of get into some other topics. Um, we've got Iran to talk about. We've got Hezbollah to talk about. We've got um, we've got we've got the Israeli reaction to Iran's attack on Israel. We've got a lot to talk about. And hello again to everybody who's joining. Thank you to all the members who are here. Thank you to Avi, VB, and Deanna, the Being Becoming. Thank you to all the beautiful members who are here and to all the viewers who are here. To Tohidul Islam is here from Bangladesh. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I'll just say again, as the chat keeps growing, please join our Discord because tonight after the stream, we're also going to be taking calls. So if you guys want to join the Discord and actually call into the show, this is where you'll be able to call in. But um, if you guys want to actually discuss... Right after the show, I'm going to be hopping into the Discord chat on the live channel, and we'll be able to talk face-to-face. -face. No filters, nowhere to run, just having fun conversation. Okay, let's talk about Hezbollah. First thing that happened yesterday. Pretty horrific attack. 14 troops and 4 civilians wounded in Hezbollah drone attack on the northern border town. This is from the Times of Israel. They slammed into the community center on Arab, Arab al-Aramash. Arab al-Aramash is a northern Bedouin town in Israel. Who are the Bedouins? They are devout Muslims, actually known in the Arab world as some of the original inhabitants uh, or the original carriers of Islam. The people that make up the communities of Saudi Arabia, the people that make up the communities of the UAE are... The people that make up the communities of Saudi Arabia, the people who make up the communities of the UAE and the Gulf states, um, they were originally Bedouins. Did you guys know that? The Arabs that are sort of the original source DNA of Arabs are Bedouins. Isn't that amazing? Bedouins are sort of the core. And, um, well, Hezbollah, funded by Iran, I mean, it's been a... It's been an absolute tirade on the Arab Muslim community, on Palestinians, since Iran has decided to directly intervene in this. And it's interesting to me, it's very interesting to me to see the rationale of the people who keep celebrating the Iranian attacks, because let's clarify who was the only person injured in the Iranian attacks on Israel. A, Bedouin, Arab, she's Israeli, but essentially Palestinian girl. A Muslim girl. That was the only person who was injured. Yesterday, the attack of Hezbollah in northern Israel, the only person who was injured, or the only people who were injured, out of civilians, four Bedouins. They attacked directly a northern Arab community, a northern Muslim community, directly onto a Muslim community. So this is what you see. Um, and again, this was clear to us during the 7th of October, on how Hamas and all these Iranian-funded proxies, they don't give a shit about Muslims. They don't give a shit about Palestinians. They don't give a shit about Arabs. All they care about is corruption, greed, money, and a perverted sense of Islam or Islamism, jihadism. There is no element of Islam in the core of what these groups believe. There is no element of integrity in what these groups believe. 14 troops hurt. Israeli, I guess they got what they asked for. Four civilians wounded. Those civilians were Muslims. They attacked a Muslim community center, a Muslim town. Muslims attacking Muslims. Arabs attacking Arabs. That's what you get with Iranian-funded proxies. And the only time Iran has ever attacked Israel itself, you get a direct attack on a Bedouin Arab Muslim girl. These, these organizations are corrupt. Iran is corrupt. The, the further and the faster we're able to topple these regimes, the better the, the world will be and the better the, the better the shape of the Middle East will be. And that gets into our next topic, which is the response from Israel and the Iranian attack. We talked about this before. I'm curious to hear your thoughts again. Considering all the news, we're going to run a little poll here. Do you guys think... Israel will directly, and keyword directly, strike 
to strike Iran. There has been some very interesting political games uh, being played in Israel, between, in the Middle East, between Israel, Lebanon, Hezbollah, the Houthis, and the United States of America. I'm honestly, I'm saddened to see everything that's going on. It's, we're playing a game with people's lives at this point for political, for political points. It's a fucking game that's being played for political points with people's lives. That's what's going on around. It's absolutely disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. It's, it's quite shameful, to be honest with you. Um, and I'll break it down for you guys right now, but I'm curious to hear what you guys say. So for those of you guys who say no, if I remember correctly, the last time we asked this question was two live streams ago. We asked the question about, will Israel attack Iran directly? I think we did have an overwhelmingly positive answer. Please, please, please let me know down below why you believe that Israel will not attack Iran. And yes, the being becoming said a very important, uh, a very important, uh, uh, a very important comment here, which said Iran equals the Islamic Republic. Iranians like it when we make that distinction correct. It's not Iran that attacked us. It's the Islamic regime of Iran. Uh, it's a group that has taken Iran hostage and the people of Iran hostage. The Islamic regime of Iran. I should always say that. Thank you for correcting me. So I'm curious to hear from you guys why you guys think that Israel will not attack the Islamic regime of Iran directly. So Jack says, I want them to, but Biden is saying no. Correct. Biden has said no. He said no, but he also told Iran, he said no. He said don't. Um, HD said, I don't think Israel should attack directly. Please explain why. I'm curious to hear what you have to say. Nigel says, I want Israel, but they won't. Let's see what else you guys have here. Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden. Atheist Gamer says Israel has autonomy from Biden. I mean, I guess they do, but it's a lot of political games that are being played here. Mila says because Biden said no and someone doesn't have the gall to sever ties with Sleepy Joe. Um, Magama says peace is the only option. Love from Ireland. This is a little disconnected from the chat, but okay. Um, HD says, I think Israel should double down the Abraham Accords right now. Interesting. Okay, before I give you guys my answer and my analytical breakdown of all this, for the 114 people listening right now, please, please, please click this link down below. Join the Discord because we're going to be taking calls towards the end of the stream. And also, after this live stream, I'm hopping on Discord in the voice channel. We're all going to sit together. We're going to discuss. We're going to talk to each other. We're going to interact with each other. Hit that link. Join the Discord. It's going to be a fun time after. We're going to talk about how to shape our Discord community, moderators, all this stuff. So please hit that Discord link and join. Let's talk about it. Here's my breakdown for what I think is going on. For one, the incompetence of Hezbollah, Iran, Houthis, the, the synergy between them is proving to be completely incapable to achieve anything. Not only completely incapable to achieve anything, it's just like it's a fucking mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. They're firing at each other. They're killing their own people. They're they're literally they're shaheeding shaheeds. It's none of it makes any sense. None of it is rational. So that's one. It's a it's a false battle. It's a it's a false battle put like draped in a curtain that says freedom fighting and liberty. While there's people in the West, I would say idiots in the West, cheering for the Islamic Republic of Iran, saying that Israel instigated uh, this attack on Israel. Let's clarify something. Israel did not attack the consulate of Iran in Syria. It attacked a building that was um, the, the building that was built for the IRGC commanders from the army of the IRGC, the Islamic Republic of Iran, that again, the whole world agrees, has taken the Iranian public hostage. A majority of Iranian civili civilians, citizens do not support the Islamic Republic of Iran. And the Islamic Republic of Iran for the last two years, three years, I mean, probably for the last 20, has waged a war on women. You don't wear your hijab the right way. You get jailed, tortured, raped, killed. You disappear. So we've established, I don't know why I'm holding these cups. We've established that Iran is an unjust or the government of Iran, the Islamic Republic, is an unjust leader of Iran. We've established that they're paying out all these proxies to commit war and destabilization in the Middle East. And it was found out this week, Saudi Arabia officially announced that they're positive 
that Iran, the Islamic Republic of Iran, started this whole October 7th campaign to destabilize the region and halt the Abraham Accords, which would lead the Middle East to an element of peace, at least a majority of the Western Middle East. North Africa, maybe some of the Levant. It's clear now what has gone on. So when you acknowledge that Iran is the, is the puppeteer playing at the strings, shittily, mind you, shittily, not succeeding and not doing anything correct in its goals, but you see, you see Iran puppeteering this whole mess, we have to think about what does the IDF do now? Immediately after the attacks of Iran, of the, the Islamic Republic on Iran, they announced that from their perspective, it's over. They don't want to be involved anymore. They're done. I'm holding the cup again. <laughs> Iran, and, oh fuck man, I'm trying to put down the cup. Get the fucking away, get away from me, cup. Um, Iran established, they are done. They did their attack on Israel, they're, they're done. They're clean, their hands are clean, they're done. They responded accordingly. They don't want anything else, they won't escalate anymore. In my opinion, dick move, but fine. Israel is then left in a position. Do we respond? We have to talk to our big brother, America. America says, Joe, Joe Biden says, no, don't. He says, actually, specifically what Joe Biden had mentioned to Bibi Netanyahu was, if you respond, we will not follow you into battle. If you respond, you will not have American support because Joe Biden is thinking about his reelection campaign, which doesn't even fucking make any sense anymore because most likely he's not going to win this presidency. And to be honest with you, and this isn't me being the most unbiased, but it's not like I'm unbiased usually. Joe Biden trying to die over Israel and Palestine to appease either the left or the right, while pretty much being a staunch Zionist his entire career, doesn't really make any sense. Just fucking, dude, at least if you're going to go down, go down with the Jews liking you. Like, don't fucking try to appease radical Muslims and leftists who believe in chanting death to America, who believe that America is a shitty country. I'm just saying from the rationale of Joe Biden and his team, at least make the independent, independent decision, but he can't because the guy's not even conscious of anything anymore. I'm going to take a moment before I continue my analysis because I got a lot more to say. Please, 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 folks, join our Discord community because at the end of this stream... I'm going to be joining the Discord community, and we're going to be talking live together. I'm going to join the, uh, the speaker room there. Ooh, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Sorry, folks. Um, join the Discord community. We'll also be taking calls from there later in this live chat. So if you guys want to call into the show, please, please, please. I would love to call you guys in, but also... We'll have a little hangout session after this live stream is over. We'll join the lounge room and we can just chill and talk. Okay, on to my analysis. Joe Biden says America. America will not support Israel. Israel is now tough, is in a tough spot. Israel is in a tough spot. By the way, guys, chat's going crazy. 150 people in here. It chat tends to go crazy and hopefully we can break some numbers of our last live stream. We started off a little slow today, but... Who knows, last live stream, two live streams ago, we had 450 people in here, right? 10,000 people on the stream. So I don't know, it was crazy. Um, if we can get into this at some point, like into uh, into more people, just keep in mind, super chats go a long way to supporting the channel. Uh, you can obviously support and donate to the channel in any way you want through the different links on the channel. But super chats will go a long way to support the channel and it'll get my attention immediately. Never expected, but always appreciated. Um, Israel says... Israel says, Amer or America says Israel don't attack. Israel is left in a tough position. Israel is left, left in a tough position. Now we're going to point a question to the room before we continue on with my analysis because I've got, I've got interesting analysis, I think, to go on with this. Can I not pose a question anymore? I guess they took away the question feature. Guys, I'm going to get a cup of water and I'm going to wait for you guys to answer this question. What should Israel do? Again, Iran makes its first attack of 300 air superiority weapons, drones, ballistic missiles, and cruise missiles. I was here. I experienced it firsthand. On to Israeli territory. Iran does that. America says, don't respond. What should Israel do? Go. I'm getting a cup of water. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm listening to you guys. I'm just getting a cup of water.
Just cupping up. Just cupping up. Go. What should Israel do? Archibald Naomi says they should chill the F out. Who should chill the F out? Iran or Israel? I hope you're not saying that Israel should chill the F out because it doesn't make any sense. They got attacked. I'm going to blow my nose. <sighs> they should focus on Gaza and getting their hostages. Super Platano man said. Interesting, interesting take. We're going to talk about this. Yaqub Ali said, free Palestine. Very good, interesting, good analysis. You're definitely going to be freeing Palestine through here. Don't forget to hit that like. Let's get to 100 likes. Thank you, Hannah Anderson. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We've got 173 people in the room right now. This is amazing. False flag operation on a U.S. military base. Faizan Wani says, love Iran from Kashmir. I hope you meant the Iranian people and not the Iranian, the Islamic Republic. Bob Saget said, the whole world hates you because you are unhinged and y'all should chill the fuck out. Zionist brain rot. We got a lot of anti-Semites up in this hoe tonight. Hello, everybody. Salamu alaikum. Salamu alaikum in Islam. How would you like your anti-Semitism today? Yes. Palestine will rise. Okay, everybody's trying to free Palestine in the chat today. It's nice. Tohil Islam said, We must remember that mistakes happen and none can avoid it. But if Israel attacks Iran in return, Iran will make propaganda. Let's say an Iranian who supports Israel was harmed by IDF rockets. True, 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 true. True, true, true. Yakub Ali says, Are you Jill? Yakub, I am Jill. I am a dirty Jill. I'm a Zionist. You better watch out. The very naughty, naughty Jew. You have to be careful. You have my big Jew nose. You be very careful of me. I will get you. I will get you. You be careful. Here's my analysis. You want to hear it? Israel's in a tough position. Don't have America's support. Doesn't make any fucking sense because this would be literally the only time in history that you could actually liberate you could potentially liberate the Iranian people from the Islamic Republic. With a U.S. intervention, there could be a war fought that would actually not just liberate the Iranian people, but potentially liberate, liberate all these factions. I mean, the south of Lebanon, the Houthis in Yemen who have been causing havoc in Yemen and nobody talks about. It. They've been killing hundreds of thousands of people. It could clear up Lebanon and obviously help the Palestinians. It's, an, it's a goal, it's an actual, it's a war that would be fought that could actually help people. But we don't have the support from America, so it's not the time. What's the solution? The solution is pivot. We've been trying to enter Rafah for the last month plus, and we've gotten nothing but international condemnation. This Iranian attack has somehow allowed America into thinking that the entrance into Rafah and the, um, the operation in Rafah to get the hostages back and to finish off Hamas once and for all is just. I don't know how the logic works exactly, what changed, but it seems like Joe Biden rather Israel invade Rafah than begin a war with Iran. Folks, today I read an article... I read an article. I'm going to try to pull it up. Yep, this is from today, from the Times of Israel. The American administration showed acceptance of the plan previously presented by the occupation government regarding the military operation in Rafah in exchange for not carrying out a large-scale attack against Iran. An unnamed official told Al-Arabi Al-Jadid. al, al, al from the Egyptian side, it seems like there's some coordination happening where Egyptians are preparing plus tents um, with tents and with uh, housing communities 
to prepare for the displacement of Gazan civilians into Egypt, into Sinai, which should have been happening from October 10th. That should have happened from October 10th. But the Egyptian government and the Egyptians as a country should be ashamed of their response for their so-called brothers in Palestine. But it seems like now the rightful displacement of Palestinians into Sinai for their protection and to save lives is going to happen. And Egypt will actually have to start picking up its fucking pants. Hey, Terry, welcome to the chat. Egypt cannot run away from the Palestine issue anymore. Gaza is on Egypt's border as well. They need to assist. They are a part of the problem. The reason why Hamas is so well armed is because of Egypt. The reason why Hamas is so powerful is because of Egypt. Egypt allowed the funneling of weapons, money, ammunition from Iran directly into the Gaza Strip. There's no other way it could have made it in. Egypt is a huge part to blame and they need to be a part of the cleanup. They need to be a part of the cleanup. This is the effort to clean up Gaza. To, to prepare Gaza for a good life for Palestinian civilians. To prepare Gaza, to liberate Gaza from the clutches of the extremism that is the IRGC of the, the Islamic Republic of Iran. 200 people here in the chat. You guys remember when it used to be really hard for us to get 200 people on the chat? Fucking crazy. Crazy. Chrome dropped us $5 and said Israel should, be, should back a movement led by the Iranian people to overthrow the Islamic regime. I agree, but they're also, I mean, if to overthrow the Islamic regime, there's just too much money in there right now. It's got to be a direct war. There's got to be a serious assassin assassination uh, campaign against all the top leaders of the IRGC. It needs to be toppled. The thing needs to be toppled from the top down. It seems like now what has happened is that the, the, the fears of an all-out war between Israel and Iran, which I think Israel is pretty much prepared to fight because they know that Iran won't be able to handle it, uh, is, is, so, is, is, is scaring U.S. administration so much and Joe Biden that they just said, fuck it, invade Rafah. Just go in already. Just do your Rafah thing. Get your hostages. Clear out Hamas. And we'll talk about Iran later. The thing is, and this is my theory. I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts on it. But before we do it, and I want to hear your guys' thoughts about this. Thank you, by the way, Chrome, again for the, for the super chat. Oh, shit. I got uh, hiccups. <laughs> Thank you guys for the super chat. Started... <laughs> Start to come in. One second, I gotta drink some more water. <laughs> oh. Ah. Sorry, guys. Dolan Berger says, and dropped me $4.99. Thank you, Dolan, so much. I appreciate it. We're at $10 in the Super Chat tonight. Obama should have also supported demonstrations in Iran in 2011. Also, Iran gave us a gift by being dumb. Rafah has cleared a strike. That's it. Correct. Rafah is cleared a strike. It's on the table now. And this is what's going to happen. The attack on Rafah will commence. But this is my theory. My theory is that this doesn't end with Rafah. It can end with Rafah. Iran has dumped and poured too many resources, too many resources into Hamas. I don't think that Iran will let Hamas go down without a fight. And to be honest with you guys, I don't think you, I don't think Hamas is as close as we might think they are to being toppled, which is a part of the reason why I think the Iranian response has never been so crazy yet. I think that if Israel makes great strides in Rafah, if it truly is the last stronghold of Hamas the way that they're saying they are, and I think obviously they have every right to attack Rafah, whether it is or isn't, they should be doing everything in their power to liberate the Palestinian people from this uh, extremist, uh, extremist ideology. But, you know, it, whether it is or not the last stronghold, whether or not this clears up uh, Gaza from Hamas, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It needs to be done. But whether or not Iran will not intervene, I don't know. And I, I, I have a good feeling to say that if they get close, I think that Iran will start responding again anyways. And so a war with Iran, is, uh, it's, it's inevitable. This is the analogy that I want to put on the table here. And before I say the analogy, I want to say one more time, please, 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 friends, 200 people in this live stream, and I love you all so much. $11 in Super Chats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Israel Tavor dropped us a six shekel. Um, thank you, Israel Tavor. Said, I've got a lot to say about Iran. Can you call for sure, man, towards the end of the show? We'll do some calls. 
good segue. Please, everybody, join the Discord link I just dropped in the stream right now. We not only will be taking your calls, but after this live stream, we're all heading over to Discord, all of us. We're going to head over to Discord to the lounge room, and we'll all be able to talk openly and freely. It'll be a big conversation between a lot of people. Obviously, if you start spamming, I'll kick people out. But I want to have a large discussion with a bunch of people. We'll talk about stuff openly. Um, you're free to come and record if you wanted to and post shit about it online. You're free to do whatever you want. It's a, it's going to be an open chat. I also want to talk about the Discord. I want to get into the conversation about moderators and stuff. So please, please, please click the Discord link. I'm popping it in one more time. Go for it right there. Um, okay, so what was I saying? I had a theory. Oh, I had my, uh, my metaphor. My metaphor, my analogy. Let's say this is my arm. Okay, let's break down my arm into segments. My hand, I got my fingers, I've got my hand, like the palm of my hand, then I've got my, my wrist, my forearm. Okay, that's my arm, broken up into a bunch of parts. Let's say I get an infection, right? But I get an infection in my fingertips. If I cut off my fingertips, I've cut off the infection, it's over, it's at the top. Okay, we've cut off the infection. It's gone. That's it. Now we just got to care for that. We got to put some antibiotic ointment. We got to care for. We got to take. We got to. We got to make sure it doesn't get dirty. We got to make sure that. We got to make sure that the fingers that you just cut off, that you amputated. Thank you, BT. You, I amputated my fingers. We got to make sure that those fingers are well taken care of. Let's say the infection. I didn't cut off my, my fingers. The infection starts spreading from the tip of my fingers to the palm of my hand and then to my wrist. And then I have to come to a decision. There's three out of the four segments of my hand are infected. It's about to reach my forearm. It's on my wrist right now. It's a tough decision. But if I don't cut it off at the source of where that infection is, if I, let's say, just cut off uh, just cut off a piece of my fingers right now, or if I cut off my palm, I cut off my hand, the infection's still in my wrist. It's still going to spread to my forearm. Cutting off Hamas only in Rafah doesn't get to the core issue. It doesn't get to the core issue of, what's, of what the problem is. If we just cut off Hamas, if we just remove Hamas, if we just remove Hezbollah, if we just do this cleaning up effort of clearing the Middle East from these extremist groups, we're not getting to the core issue. We're not getting to the core of what needs to be done. And that's a problem because how are we to, how are we to expect that any of these Muslim extremist groups won't pop up again if we, if we have Iran, the, the Islamic regime of Iran, sitting there at the top, continuously funding extremists. Well, we can't. We'd be delusional. We would be delusional to expect this to all end with Hamas. It can't end with Hamas. If there is a will, there is a way. And there is a will from Iran, from the Islamic Republic of Iran. There always will be. I think that we have an opportunity now. Iran has given us that opening to go forth an attack and to take off and to do all of this, to, to properly take off or to properly take on the Islamic Republic. But, you know, the issue is, is that we don't have the support from America. We don't have the support. It seems like we don't have, we have waning support from the outside world. So look, at the end of the day, I think Israel will focus on Gaza. I think they will be successful with Gaza, at least if they won't, um, at least if they won't clear out Hamas 100%, at least remaining whatever whatever parts of the remaining hostages are, are, are to be re to be retrieved, they will be retrieved. Hey, Veronica, aloha. Happy that you're here. I haven't heard from you in a while. Whatever parts of the hostages are, are retrievable, they will retrieve. Whatever, whatever they can get in Rafah, they will retrieve. Whatever gains they can make militarily in Rafah, they will make. But it doesn't, it doesn't solve the core problem. And that's the scary part. I love, by the way, that we have been managing 200 people in this chat. I'm very, very proud of this community. I got to be honest with you guys. Regardless of the fact there's a lot of anti-Semites in here, which is fine. We got to give them a voice. 
The dummies also have to be able to express themselves at a certain level. At least we're expressing themselves in a community where we can make fun of them. Um, uh, I, we have been balancing about 200 people in this chat the entire time. This is amazing. And we started off slow tonight. Very, very cool, guys. This is very promising for me, this whole live streaming thing. I love this. Um, Super Platano Man says... Platano Man says... All the wars of so-called liberations backed by the Unite, United States have been historically been a disaster, especially recently in Iraq, Libya, Syria, Afghanistan. How would a war with Iran be different? One, Israel's not a colonial power like America, who's trying to intervene in the Middle East on a basis of oil, gas. I mean, look, the American military, there's good things to be said about it and its intentions in the Middle East. There's a lot of bad to be said about it in the Middle East. Israel is not America. That's an important distinction to make. Israel's or America's sovereignty and existence is not put in peril by any of these countries in the Middle East. Syria, Lebanon, Iran, uh, Yemen, Egypt, Jordan. They directly put Israel's life in danger, like the actual survivability of the country into the future. This isn't a war about gaining resources. It's not a war about, uh, about putting on a military occupation. It's not a war about spreading democracy or ideology. It's about toppling a government and an army that wants to seek your destruction. That's what it is. I mean, I also am the believer that we should have liberated the North Korean people a long time ago. The fact that the North Koreans are living in a, in a, in a pseudo-Holocaust environment under concentration camps for as long as they have been, I think the fact that the international community lets that go by every single day and still somewhat interacts with North Korea and pretend like it's pretend like it's all good. I remember when I started travel vlogging when I was younger and there were fucking YouTube travel vloggers traveling to North Korea to get views. It was one of the things I always stood upon. It was my moral it was my moral to say I will not travel to North Korea no matter what. Because how the fuck can I travel to North Korea? How can I support something like that in any context? For YouTube views, it's not worth it. And by the way, North Korea wants to, has been seeking the destruction of Israel as well because they're in bed with the, with the Islamic Republic of Iran. North Korea and what goes on in North Korea is an absolutely despicable thing. It's like traveling to a human zoo. So, super platinum amount to your point, and thank you for your $10 super chat. I appreciate you a lot. We're at $21 right now in super chats. Uh, all the wars of so-called liberations backed by the United States have historically been a disaster. Of course they have, because there, weren't, there were intentions there by the United States that weren't survivability. Or it, it was an, it, it's, a, it's a war fought with an within ideology of instilling something new. If Israel doesn't fight these wars, it's, it's, it's an existential crisis. Israel cannot afford to allow these countries to continually threaten its existence. We've made peace with Egypt. We've made peace with, um, we've made peace with uh, Jordan. Fantastic. We made peace with Morocco. We made peace with the UAE. We made peace. We're pretty much made peace with Saudi Arabia at this point. Like, come on. It's, it's happening. And that's amazing. Those were countries that attacked us at one point. Those were countries that funded our attackers at some point. Things are a changing, folks. Things are a fucking changing. They're fucking changing, folks. And we got to change with them. That's my ideology. So if it means that we need to fight a war, and again, I can say this from a perspective of privilege because I don't, I'm not in the army and I'm not actually fighting this war. But if I look at it logistically, you've got to fight the fucking war. You have to. You can't keep pretending. I mean, like, right now we're at a standstill with the Abraham Accords. It's hard to make this peace. It's hard. To, the thing is with the peace, what I think people don't understand with the peace, as long as the peace keeps happening, the peace keeps being made, the civilian populations will change their ideology slowly, slowly. It's not the case with Jordan and Egypt because, one, Jordan is made up of pretty much Palestine. It's hard because... It's pretty much Palestine. In Egypt, there was direct war fought with them. But Lebanon's on the way, man. People in Beirut, I've met a lot of Lebanese people. 
I've talked to a lot of Lebanese people. Lebanese people in Beirut and a majority of the country does not support the south of the country. Does not support Hezbollah by any way, shape, or form. The Lebanese people are good, honorable people. They have no interest in fighting a war. They used to be the most populous Christian country in the Middle East. They are not a radical Muslim nation. That's not what Lebanon is. Lebanon was never that in its history. That's something that changed in our lifetimes. In our lifetimes, Lebanon has become a radical Islamic society. Hi, Mars Melo, I was waiting for you. I was waiting for your beautiful messages. I'm so happy that you're here. Lebanese people do not want this. Iranian people do not want this. Yes, in Afghanistan, I think you could say, but I'm hearing from Iraqis too, that they're becoming an extremely secular society. The people of the Middle East don't want Islamic extremism. And it's the duty of the people who are waking up. It's, du it's the duty of us making the coalition of countries like Saudi Arabia, of countries like Jordan, of countries like Qatar, uh, or not Qatar, because uh, Qatar is a piece of shit. Bahrain, the UAE, it's, it's, it's our duty to work together to liberate these people from this clutch of this fucking radical Islamism. And I'm not saying it from the perspective of American liberation, as if bringing democracy. Fuck it. You don't need democracy. But topple, topple these governments and topple these armies and these militant societies and these terrorist groups that are funded by the Islamic Republic of Iran in order to create a better future for ourselves. That's the idea. It needs to happen. I'm curious to know, do you guys disagree with me? What do you guys think? I'm going to read some of your comments right now. And I want to say we got 221 freaking people in here. 221 in here. God bless you all for being away. $21 in the super chat. Please join the Discord community. I hit the link. Hit the Discord community. Join the link right there. After this live stream, we're all heading into the Discord lounge group, the microphone group. You can hang there and just listen. You can talk to me. We're going to all talk on Discord together. We're going to appoint some uh, Discord mods tonight. It's going to be in, it's going to be fun. We're going to talk about how the Discord group grows. What else happened with Discord group in the in the future? We got we got almost a hundred people in the Discord group, or maybe over a hundred at this point. I think over a hundred people now in Discord. So please, please join our Discord community. It's a great community. <clears throat> We're gonna talk. We're gonna have fun. Uh, after this live stream, immediately after the live stream, I'm going in that lounge group, and we're all talking openly. So feel free to go in there, and you can talk about whatever you want. Um, okay, let me see here. Tal Sehan said. Do you really think that Bibi would let them back in from the Sinai, from Sinai? I get them becoming Egyptian citizens and potentially allowing Jordan to annex the West Bank and solve the conflict seems incredibly unjust. I get them becoming Egyptian citizens and potentially allowing Jordan to annex the West Bank solves the conflict seems incredibly unjust. There's no just, I don't know if you're in support of Jordan annexing the West Bank. There is no justification for Jordan being able to annex the West Bank in any way, shape or form ever. That should never be an option. The West Bank should be incorporated into Israel to provide better lives for all of its citizens. It should not be another Muslim state. There's no way to defend those borders. There's no way to protect the Israeli public, which includes Muslims from attacks from radical Muslims, as we are seeing now by the Islamic public of Iran and Hezbollah, who this week have attacked and injured fellow Muslims. No justification in the West Bank becoming part of Jordan. It will lead to extremism and it will lead to more dead Arabs. It's the only thing that happens. It should be incorporated into Israel and protected. Abraham Isaac Kaplan just dropped us 199. Thank you. Chazaku Baruch He said, strong and blessed. Toda Avon. Appreciate you a lot. Um, and what else did you say? Do you think Bibi would let them back in from Sinai? I don't know. It's a mixed bag if Bibi would let them back in from Sinai. I think the question is not if BB would let them back into Sinai, because to be honest with you, I think that this process is going to take so long, BB might not even be prime minister at the point where they're allowed to come back in or at the point where that is a reality that could be created where they're allowed back in. But the reality is, what is better, dead Palestinians or Palestinians that are displaced? I would say displaced Palestinians. That's a better solution than dead Palestinians. What's better? People living in refugee camps on the border of Egypt, when they already have refugee status, right? They're already technically refugees. So what's better, them living as refugees and dying every day, or them living as refugees and surviving and having an element of freedom? It's an easy toss. 
There is no point in being a Shaheed. It doesn't get you anywhere. It hasn't gotten Palestine any further. The 30,000 people that the Hamas Health Ministry has, has quoted as being killed by Israel. How has it forwarded the goals of Hamas? How has it forwarded the Palestinian state? How has it forwarded anything in the promotion, in the ideology of free Palestine, in a free Palestinian state? Where has it, what has it done for Palestinians? Let me tell you guys, it's done jack shit. It's done nothing. It is so much better for Palestinians to be displaced in Sinai, which by the way, a lot of Palestinians in Gaza are originally from Egypt in Sinai, but that's a different conversation. It doesn't really matter for this context, but it is something important to note. It's a proven thing. Their families are, a lot of them are originally from Sinai. What's better? Is it better to, to, to kill them or is it better to displace them to Egypt for an undesignated amount of time until they can come back home and it's safe? Well, it's like the people in the north of Israel, they have a fucking end date of when the displacement goes on. No, but the world doesn't talk about it. Nobody gives a fuck about the 100,000 people in Israel and northern Israel that are just outside of their homes. They don't have a home right now. They're completely homeless because Hezbollah is waging a war in their homes. Nobody gives a fuck about them. Nobody cares about them. No one is talking about them. I haven't seen a fucking single YouTube video made about them besides me. I've seen some YouTube mentioning them, but I haven't seen people dedicating time to talk about these people. If nobody gives a fuck in the international community about the 100,000 people of Northern Israel that Hezbollah has waged war on, who are Muslim and Arab as well in there, not just Jewish people, Christians, Muslims, Arabs, Jews, the whole mixed bag. If nobody cares about the residents of Northern Israel, what's all the fuss with displacing Palestinian citizens from Gaza? If, if they're not gonna die, if it's saving their lives, equal in my opinion, what, so only Palestinians have to die? Only Palestinians have to be shaheeds to Islam? What the fuck is that about? In my opinion, that's fucking racist. <clears throat> why, <clears throat> why do Palestinians have to die? They shouldn't die. They, they, we should be treating Palestinians with the same level of respect that we're treating Israeli citizens. What happened to the Israeli citizens that were displaced from their homes, that have been refugees for the last six months? Israel provided them a place to go. Hotels, people's houses, they're living displaced across the country. But what? They're alive. They are alive. They're not under siege. Gaza has been taken over by a radical Muslim Arab society. It needs to be cleaned. It needs to be fixed up. It needs to be prepared for people to live there. Why force Gazans to live there? Why? Rafah invasion goes on. Clear out. Clear out Gaza from as many innocent civilians as you can. Let them go into Egypt. For God's sakes, give them a break. Give them food. Let them give nourishment. Take care of them. Let them, let them, let them escape from the horrors of the six months. Let them live like a human being and not like an animal for, for, for a little bit. Let them feel a sense of sanity. Take a break off their fucking back. Have some fucking compassion for your fellow Muslims. Have some compassion for your fellow Arabs. For all these fucking Arabs and Muslims that speak, that pretend, and all these adjacent people that are, that are fucking pro-Palestine, that pretend like they care about Palestinians. This is what caring for a Palestinian looks like. This is what caring for Palestinians looks like. You want the best for them. I want them to be displaced. I don't want them to be in a state of war. I don't want them to be having bombs falling on them. I don't want them to have the opportunity to be used as a human shield. I don't want them to have the, have the opportunity to miss the leaflet that the IDF drops on them. I don't want them to have the opportunity to be tempted into being a shaheed, into being a martyr for Islam. Put them on the other side of the border. Let them take a break. They've lived over six, they've lived for six, seven months of horror, family members dead, body parts blown, terrible things have happened. Give them time to recuperate. Give them time to survive. That's what Arabs and Muslims should be proud to do, not die for Islam. It's not gonna get you anywhere. Palestinians have been dying for Islam for 75 years. It hasn't gotten you anywhere. It's only made the clutch of the Zionist entity of the Jews worse on you. It's only added walls, restrictions, borders, lacks of freedom, all of, all of the, all that it's done. The Palestinian martyrdom and the, the freedom fighter mentality, that's all it's done for Palestine. That's all it's ever done. 
is make life worse for Palestinians. You have an opportunity now to liberate Gaza, to clean Gaza, to give it an opportunity to have the people, the residents of there, to have a good life. And you're spitting on it. And I say this to the Muslim community, to the Ummah. You are spitting on that idea. It's fucked up. I'm tired of it. It's a whole, it's a, it, this is a chain. It starts with Iran at the top. It starts at Iran at the top. And we clean it up. We start with Hamas and we, we hopefully get to a point where we can make peace in the Middle East by helping these people actually live lives that are decent. At least showing them some level of compassion. And not subjugating them to war all the time. They shouldn't be living in an internal cycle of war. <coughs> if, if Sinai gives them an element of peace in their lives, that's what they should have. They deserve that. Palestinians deserve that. We should all want that for Palestinians. Yeah, I went hard. Huh? I went on a little rant there. Sorry, guys. I was ignoring the chat. Please type your opinions. I'd love to hear. Also, by the way, I'll announce the Discord thing one more time. Hit that Discord link, folks. Join the Discord group. After this, I'm going on the lounge. The Discord will all be able to talk and... Uh, and enjoy and share each other's company. We'll talk about the uh, Discord mod rules. It'll be fun. So join the Discord group after this call or during this call. And in a bit, I'm going to be taking calls from viewers just like you, live viewers. So anybody who's in here who wants to have a call, I'll do a little thing here. Anyone want to join the stream? If any of you guys want to call in, tell me your opinions. Please, please, please. You're more than welcome to here on Discord. Anybody want to join the stream? Join the Discord link. Okay, let's see here. HD, one of the one of the OG viewers, one of the bombs, one of the best. <clears throat> the entire Palestinian narrative is centered around fighting Israel. Who are they when they are not fighting the Jews over the land? Who will lead them and what kind of society will they build? Okay, I used, to, I used to talk about this a lot more when I first started live streaming a couple months back. Here's what I say, and I, know, and I don't say this in a demeaning way, but I think a lot of you guys will be able to agree with me. Obviously, the anti-Semites, the pro-Palestine people in this, in this chat are not going to agree with this because they'll find this demeaning, but I don't say it in a demeaning way. The group of people known as Arabs as a whole, as a whole, there's exceptions, but they have shown us to be completely incompetent in the last hundred years since the world has reformed into this sort of bordered world that we live in today. Arabs as a whole, especially the Arabs of the Levant, right? The Arabs of the Gulf are an exception. But the Arabs of the Levant and, and, and extremist Islamic societies like you see in the Levant and most of the Middle East have shown us to be extremely incompetent. It is our duty as their neighbors who don't have this incompetency problem, who are on somewhat of a level of sane and running a normal society to help our neighbors. We help, Israel helps its neighbors in so many variety of ways. Irrigation systems in Egypt, water in Jordan, there was military assistance in Turkey, there was military, there was medical assistance and, um, or not military assistance, medical assistance after the earthquakes in Turkey. There has been military refugee assistance in Syria. The, the, Israel has been bringing Christian Lebanese into its border to, to, to live in peace from the persecution of southern Lebanese Muslims. We help our neighbors in a time of need. Our neighbors are struggling. Palestinians have shown us that they're in, in completely incompetent of being able to run a government. They're not able to run a society properly. They need our assistance and we shouldn't ignore them in my opinion. We should help them. We need to help them. It's our duty. It is our duty. It's our duty to help them. It's our duty to help Egypt. It's our duty to help Jordan. If we as the Jewish state are to, are to take this title of to be a light onto the world, I truly believe that we need to. If that, if that means a military campaign, that well, the end goal is to assist, to help, then we have to do it. It's part of what we have to do. If the end goal is a peaceful life for these people, if the end goal is peaceful life for the citizens of your country as well, there's nothing more just than that. We need to help our neighbors. They've shown us that they can't do it on their own. We need to help them. And there are good people across the Middle East. There's tons of good people. <clears throat> you need to remember that amongst all the Arabism and Islamism 
There are ethnic minorities that number in the millions that are suffering under this persecution. It needs to be our goal as, as people who are once an ethnic minority in the Middle East who now have a strong country, to, we, it needs to be our goal to help them. We need to assist them. They can't do it on their own. They have shown us that they can't do it on their own. My goddamn cup. My goddamn cup is telling you, folks. So that's my mentality. That's, I don't know. That's, that's, that's my opinion. Guys, join the Discord. Because I'm going to be taking your calls. If anybody wants to call in. Anybody want to join the stream? I would love to call you in. And then after this, after the call, we're going to hop into the Discord lounge group. And we're going to talk with our microphones on. We're going to have a great time. We're going to chill out together on Discord for the night. It's going to be really fun. So um, if anybody is interested in calling in, please, please, please call in. Tal says, if Israel annexes the West Bank and Gaza, then what's to stop the increased Arab population from being a majority in 20 to 30 years and threatening the Jewishness of Israel? The UAE has the, the local uh, Emirati residents living as an ethnic minority in their own country. There's no reason a model cannot be established to help Palestinians live in equality and freedom the way that many people in the UAE live and are immigrants to the society without feeling like they're subjugated to second classness. But the thing is, this is what I always say about the Israel-Palestine conflict. There needs to be a new solution that doesn't exist on the table. It can't be democracy for all. It can't be equal rights for all. It, it will not be able to exist here. It can't. Look around the region of the Middle East. Democracy doesn't exist anywhere. And it doesn't fully exist in Israel. We have our own problems. We shouldn't strive to be a Western system in an Eastern-minded place. We should fit in to be like our neighbors. We should fit in to be like the people around us. We shouldn't strive to be something else. We should fit in with our neighbors. It confuses the system. So I think we need to find a solution where we can, we can, we can give, we can, and I agree, Flanco. I agree with what you're saying. I don't want to say it out loud, but I agree with what you're saying to a, to a certain extent. To a certain extent, I think that there's, there's a lot of problems with that country as well. I agree. There's a lot of problems with that country, but we should strive to copy the system the system and make it into something better because democracy doesn't work here. It doesn't work. And the, the simple fact is that a right of return to Palestinians is a just thing. There should be a right of return to Palestinians, but that also means there needs to be a right of return to the Jews. Jews should be able to live unequivocally in the West Bank without threat. If you get to have a right of return to Palestinians all over this land, you have to have a right, a right of return to Jews in the West Bank. No ifs, ands, or buts. You have to. Because that's the only way it doesn't become apartheid. Because right now there's an apartheid happening in this country. You know where? In Ramallah. In Nablus. In Hebron. That's where the apartheid is happening. Go to the Palestinian cities. There aren't a single Jew living in there. You can't have any Jews living in there. You can't have any Israelis living in there. None. Most cities in Israel have mixed Arab Jewish communities. And the West Bank... Even where it's, where it's radical and there's a lot of craziness that happens in the West Bank and Judea and Samaria, there are Arabs who live in Jewish towns. Even there. <coughs> there are Palestinians who live amongst Jews. Zero Jews living in Palestinian towns. Zero. You can't have a right of return going one way. If you have a right of return for Palestinians, you have to have a right of return for Jews. And that means everybody can live everywhere. But that also means if you want to retain the ele element of a Jewish state, you need to have a system. You have to have a system. Something that is in line with the UAE that offers a good, high quality li life to everybody where everybody can live a good quality life with an element or at least as close as you can to full equality for everybody. And peace. And that's how you do it, in my opinion. It needs to be a new system. Something we don't have right now. It needs to be thought up and it needs to be implemented. ASAP. Because the democracy, two-party system, uh, it's not going to work. It's not working right now. It's not going to work. It hasn't worked for the last 75 years. We had to figure some shit else out. We have to. <coughs> Guys, 
I'm going to be taking some calls. Join the Discord group right now. Join the Discord group right now. And yes, uh, Tal is saying, could it be a system such as Dagestan? I think Dagestan and Chechnya may be bad examples, but maybe something more close to like what the Native American reservations have in the United, United States of America. Some sort of element of an autonomous zone or an enclave inside of a larger country without borders, security by Israel, a demilitarized Palestinian society as a whole. There cannot be a militarized Palestinian society. No way. But I do agree that Palestinians, if they do live off and benefit in this country, they should also serve in the army. I also think it will help. I don't think there should be an exception to Palestinians from serving in the army. That should be an element of it as well. But that's it. Yeah, well, you know what? If you say it doesn't work, it doesn't work right now. So we got to try something else. What's happening right now is not working. We can't fight a war where we end up killing each other. It's just what's happening right now is not working. That, that's what I know. And what I know is I can look around the Middle East and see maybe some inklings to a solution that, that works. We try to fit in a Western democratic system that doesn't share the values with Islam. It doesn't share the values with Judaism. It doesn't share the values with basic Middle Eastern Christianity. It's based off of a distorted version of a Judeo-Christian worldview in America. And it's not bad. It works for America. Doesn't work here. It's not working. Thanks, Avi. I love you as well. <coughs> HD, I see your messages. I don't think they're disappearing. I can see them. I see that you wrote the Arab nations need to acknowledge their role in the Palestinian and Mizrahi refugee situation and offer a joint citizenship for Palestinians and Jews from the Middle East. I agree. I agree. This, the, people like to throw this fucking thing and say, no, this needs to be a solution made by Israel and Palestine. Man, Pan-Arabism is the cancer that caused all of this to happen. It was Pan-Arabism. It was the Pan-Arab dream. It was the, the Yugoslavia of the Arabs that caused this entire issue to happen. We, we, need, to offer, we need to offer a solution that goes beyond the concept of, of, uh, of uh, left and right of democracy. It needs to be a bigger picture image here. And we're not thinking in that way. We're thinking in how can we establish a democracy in the Middle East? It doesn't work. Guys, join our Discord right now. Right now, I'm taking calls. Who's gonna be who's gonna be the first caller? Who's calling in, guys? Who's calling? Anyone wanna call in to the show right now? Anyone wanna call in? You don't have to agree with me. You don't have to disagree with me. You don't, have to, you don't have to want anything. You just want to have to talk to me. And after this live stream, we're hopping back in Discord. We're going to sit in the lounge together and we're going to chat. <coughs> we're going to have our first community hangout on Discord. It's going to be fun. We're going to hang out, microphones on, enjoying each other's company. It's going to be a fun time. Who's joining? Who is joining? Sarah for pause. Okay. We got our first new caller. I'm going to give you a call. I would like to invite to the show Mrs. I hope Mrs. Sarah K. Hey, Sarah. Hey, how are you? How are you doing? <coughs> just want to say I absolutely love your channel. Um, it's really helped a lot through this time. Thank you so much. And I think, thank you. And thanks for being a member. Thanks for being a part of the community. I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, you've super chatted a bunch as well. So I appreciate you a lot for that as well. And uh, well, tell, tell the people super a little. Chatted once. <laughs> okay. Once I don't remember everybody, but I don't remember everyone's super chats, but thank you for super chatting okay. what you did. Um, please let the people know who you are, where you're from. If you want to share a little bit about why you've called yeah. in today. Hi guys, I'm from Chicago. Um, I am a proud Jew and a Zionist. Um, I believe that Israel should exist and I think that's all Zionism really is. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's been a tough time with all the anti-Semitism going on uh, and all the 
news that is very anti-Israel. So it's very nice to be here and hear some positive stuff about Israel and uh, get to experience through you what it's like over there. Have you ever been to Israel before, Sarah? Many times. Many times. I've been about 10 times. I've done a few volunteer programs. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. so I did... uh, no. Oh. Not well. Not okay. at all. <laughs> um, the things I can say are not good, so I don't say them. Oh, is it um, all is it all shawarma, falafel, matbucha? No, it's a uh, you know some some swear phrases, telling <laughs> you know how to be rude to people. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> the good stuff. Uh, the good stuff, exactly. But I, I want to learn. I'm just very bad at learning languages, so um, yeah. But um, one thing I wanted to to mention that I, I mentioned in the chat was: Have you seen the Latma TV? Videos? Latma? Yeah. I, why, I don't know why that sounds really familiar. Is it on YouTube? They are. And they're, you know, there's actually a video, I think, from 13 years ago. Latma. And it's about, the, uh, basically, Iran getting the bomb. Okay, no, I don't know what this it's is. It's Latma TV. <laughs> I see it, but I don't know what this is. Oh, is it, it looks like Eretz Nederet. Is it like a comedy show about Israel? Yep. Um, it's great. It's very like they talk about a lot of the, the politics. They've been gone for a while, but they really are. They have these great spoofs um, and little videos about different stuff that happens in Israel. Um, but I, it, it's really cool to see some of the videos from the past still being relevant today. Oh, yeah, for um, sure. I mean, people could have predicted this. I remember when we were a kid, people could have predicted that. Um, that that the, the the craziness that's happening, especially with the Islamic Republic of Iran, would be seeping out in this way. I mean, everybody could have predicted this. We funded, we've normalized, we've allowed this cancer to grow and grow and grow. We are not treating it in any in any way, and this is the result of that. No, this is the result. How has it felt in Chicago right. to be a Jew? There's a lot of Muslims who live in Chicago. There's a lot of Palestinians. There are. I think the number one Palestinian community in the United States is in Chicago, if I remember correctly. Right. So it's it's been um, a little bit crazy. I got to admit, I'm a little uh, hesitant to post any pro-Israel stuff because in my I own a, a business, um, and I do go to people's homes that I have never met before. Mm. So it's a little bit risky. You know, there is a a certain risk to my job that I'm just not looking to put anything out there that could increase that risk. But, um, you know, I, I do wear my Jewish star every day. I've had to um, not take a few clients due to them not knowing I was Jewish and some very anti-Semitic or anti-Israel stuff uh, comments in front of me. Um, and one of my longtime clients asked me if I... Uh, what I thought about my people committing genocide in Gaza. So it's been an interesting situation. Um, and, you know, I mean, I grew up in a very anti-Semitic area uh, in the suburbs of Chicago. And so, you know, I, I dealt with it a lot growing up and people would always be like, no, that doesn't exist. You're making that up. And now it's like, see, this is what I was talking about. Yeah, we all know. We all, you, maybe you didn't hear about it, but we fucking know. We know. Oh, yeah. It's been there the whole time. Yeah, it's always been there. And it's just so funny. It's like every time there's been, in my lifetime, every time there's been a flare-up between Israel and the Palestinians, it's always come out a little bit. So I've, I've always had a wake-up. I've always known that it exists. But the way that it's meant, like, the way that it's festered since October 7th, oh, my God. It proves everything. And it proves it even yeah. more because nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> no one cares at all. No one cares. Nobody cares at it's, all. And it's, it's this time it's like they can see it. They just don't care. Like before it was almost like it was so undercover for the most part that like unless you were Jewish, you didn't really see it. Right. You'd have to you have to kind of like analyze it a bit. You have to have some knowledge, some rudimentary knowledge on the Middle East, on whatever to like kind of understand, okay, is this anti-Semitism? It was more nuanced, but now it's yeah, blatant. Yeah, it's just straight out there. It's blatant, open anti-Semitism, like open on the streets of America, all over okay. the world. It's blatant, open, targeted anti-Semitism, 
And instead of people people being against that, not only they're not against it, they embolden the anti-Semitic side. They go with it. There was a, a <clears throat> it looked like a little seminar type situation in Chicago where they were teaching people how to say death to America and death to Israel. I saw this. So, I saw this video. I saw this video. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's intense. I spent, I got my oil change the other day and just walked down the street near me and just tore down uh, anti-Israel and pro-Hamas stuff. Uh, but we're also seeing like a lot of communism stuff going yeah. on and like people using Marxism against Israel, which is weird. Which literally uh, Israel was like a pretty communist state as at its inception and the idea of a, right. kib a kibbutz kind of exists. But I think, I think why a lot of people on the left side of American politics or like whatever you would call a typical lefty, I don't, I don't really know what that really means, but whatever you'd call a lefty in America, I think why they maybe, and I don't say this as a joke. But I think maybe why they subscribe to the idea of radical Islamism at a core is because they know that Islamists, jihadis, what their actual goal is to bring the entire world to be the same thing. Like they want everybody to be Muslims. And that's kind of as communist as it gets. Nobody gets an opinion. Nobody gets a different ideology. Nobody gets to be different. You're all the same. You all have to be Muslim. Even trying to say my ideology isn't enough because if you even mess up slightly, <laughs> ideology kapara, not even the ideology neshama. It's the fucking name. Everybody needs to be Muhammad. Everybody. It's like right. <clears throat> the, the, this has always been my quarrel, my quarrel with 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 um, with the 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 far spread reaches that Christianity and Islam have done to the world with their persecution of minorities and their idea of converting everybody to the same religion. Obviously with Christianity, I don't give them as much flack anymore because it's just missionary work is really the last tenet of what happens with Christianity nowadays. And <clears throat> it's not as right. offensive anymore. Like I, you could see that there's been a, an awakening within Christian society all over the world that it, it they're not like attacking people to convert to Christianity anymore. It's not really the, the element of it. And in the Middle East where, right. mission, where missionary work that concept doesn't really exist. You see the core of what true, not true, but like what the origins of Christianity is, whether it's the Assyrian communities, the Copts, the Lebanese, that's that, that's like the core of Christianity. That's how it used to be practiced. Even Palestinian Christians in Nazareth and Bethlehem, you see them, okay? Uh -huh. They don't go around like mass converting people because they're literally an ethnic minority at this point. They're, they're a minority in their own land. But you see the, oh. con the concept of jihadis, of Islamists, it's literally, let's make the entire world the same exact fucking thing. Everyone, same name, everyone, same religion, everyone, same food, everyone, same ideology. It's fucked up. Exactly. Nobody's calling it out. Nobody cares. No. And it's, it's really a shame. I mean, I've been uh, very liberal my whole life. And all the people that I've marched for their rights and I've stood up for their... Uh, equality and uh, all of that and now they they can't seem to support us and our struggle um you you marched it, for black really lives hard. matter in 2019 2020 uh in the beginning yeah yeah I, I always had an uncomfortable suspicion even back then that black lives matter as an organization obviously i agree with the term i, I agree with the term right. that black people uh that black people matter um, but I always had an issue because I always saw the <clears throat> the leftism rife within the Black Lives Matter administration uh, and how they supported Palestine from the get go. And I ne I was not surprised when what we saw we saw since the October seventh war of them openly supporting October seventh and sort of not condemning it, but like oh that was disgusting. Yeah, that, but it, that whole thing with doesn't the surprise uh, me. paragliders. I was like, are you kidding me? Doesn't surprise me. I think Jews. I think Jews, especially Jews in America, probably Jews like you, who are fairly liberal. I grew up in a pretty conservative household. I got my own ideology. I don't. I don't consider myself either conservative or liberal. But like, I think that Jews like you, who are fairly liberal, or like probably on the Democratic left side of the aisle. You got a rude awakening since October 7th. You realize, all right, wait a second. Oh, yeah. These people don't have my best interest. They don't give a fuck about my persecution at all. Not one bit. <clears throat> so, I mean, anybody I've talked to who I, t you know, we talked to about this, that's not part of the, the situation. 
is very much, oh, it's just awful on both sides. And I go, like, that's not really, a, I mean, that's a statement, but it's not a state. Like, it's just very, yeah, it's awful on both sides. But can you give me a little more than that? So, um, Sarah, can I ask a little bit about your, uh, just because I'm curious, I always like asking when I meet fellow Jews. Uh, mm -hmm. Ashkenazi, Mizrahi, what's the, tell me a little bit about the family. Ashkenazi. Ashkenazi? Um, so we are Ashkenazi uh, from, well, basically I'm a mutt from all over Europe. Uh -huh. uh, our family left during, some of them left during, um, with the ghettos getting really bad. So my great grandmother, uh, her younger sister was actually shot in the back of the head at nine years old for being out past dark. Polish? A ghetto raid. Polish, uh, Polish, German, Austrian? Uh, Polish, yeah. Polish? Yeah. So she was shot in the back of the head uh, in the ghetto. Wow. And um, that's when they decided to marry off their daughter uh, to somebody in the U.S. So she was sent to the U.S. to get married, and that's how our family survived the Holocaust. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you've been, so your um, family history has been in the, in the U.S. since what, the 30s, 40s? Yep. And then my, my father's side of the family has actually been here way longer. Mm -hmm. uh, they were from Austria and they actually helped my mom's family uh, get here. So they helped arrange the marriage, which they found out at the wedding. So that was pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. Amazing, but, Sarah. Uh, um, yeah. Listen, much love to you. Uh, be Thank safe. You. Be safe out there in Chicago. There's well, a, you. elements of that city that are actually amazing and I love, especially the deep dish pizza. Um, oh, know. you go out here. I'll buy you some. Okay. I definitely, I will take you up on that 100%. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't been there awesome. since 2018. I would love to come back. Um, and thank you for calling in. Thanks just, for supporting the channel. It's always, it's always lovely seeing your messages here. I appreciate you a lot. Thanks for being a part of the community. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you for letting me call. Have a great day. Of course. Bye, Sarah. Thanks. Lovely. I love this fucking community. I love this fucking community. I fucking love you guys. Every single one of you. Even the anti-Semites amongst you, I love you. Who wants to call? Who wants to hop on the goddamn call? Okay, we got Torka. We got Torka. I don't know who Turka is, but I'm assuming by the name, maybe it's Turkish. Maybe it's a Turkish person. Let's call. Israel Tavor, uh, we'll, we'll give you a sorry. Israel, we always, uh, we always prioritize new callers. And on the mic right now, we got Turka. Hello. Just a second, man. I need to sort out my audio settings. Just a second. Okay, no problem. Take your time. There we go. <laughs> I like the finger yeah. covering the mic, the camera. <laughs> well, I mean, actually, it's fine. I'll, it's I'll no, it's all good. You, you don't have to have the camera on if you don't want to. Um, no, it's because for some reason it's not working. If I don't have it on, the speaker doesn't work. Okay, tell me, tell me, tell me who you are. Let, let me know a little bit about you. Yeah, so my name's actually Tal as well. I'm Tal from the chat. Ah, okay, you're Tal. Okay, cool. Yeah, so you're you're you're, you're the only other Tal that I actually know. Cool. So, yeah, so. I'm, well, I am, I'm Jewish. My mom's Jewish. My dad's actually Muslim. And oh. uh, we're from Turkey, as you can probably tell from my Discord name. Cool. And actually, cool. Like, before October 7th, I wasn't really in touch with my Jewish side. You know, I had my bar mitzvah, and we would occasionally do Shabbat with, like, my mother's side of the family. But other than that, I wasn't really in touch. I didn't really know much about Zionism in Israel, like, where the Jewish people come from. So it's only after that that I was able to get more in touch and what i what i've kind of figured out is that the more people attack us the the stronger the community gets and they actually embolden us so the more they keep trying to attack us the harder it becomes for them to, to destroy us in the end anyway i want to i want to i want to dig into this this is very interesting first of all you're tall you're a turkish jew i'm actually part yeah. Turk i'm part turkish as well i don't know i don't know how long you've been watching my videos but um uh, my grandma on my dad's side lived most of her life in Turkey. 
Um, so she was a Turkish Jew, and I, I was raised with some element of culture in it. My dad considers himself Turkish, and so I got that element as well. Um, being a Muslim and a Jew hybrid, it's interesting, especially when it's the way that you, you have it, where your dad is a Muslim, your mom is a Jew, which means from the Jewish community's perspective, you're a Jew. From the Muslim community's perspective, you're a Muslim. Talk to me a little bit about how that's been. Also, what is your accent and where, are you, where do you live now? I'm curious. Yes, I'm right now in Italy, actually, okay. in university here. Cool. Uh, yeah, it sounds American, I guess. It's just probably from watching American shows growing up. I don't have any other explanation for it. But in terms of the whole Muslim Jewish dynamic, uh, unfortunately, because I would class Turkey in the same type of country as the other countries in the Middle East, and we're not Arab, we're Turkish, we have a different society. It's, it, it's what, you know, we can debate whether Turkey is a democracy or not, but constitutionally it's a type of democracy, unlike all the other Arab states. So I think, in terms of uh, the people, there's, there's much less of a focus on you know, after the fall of the Ottoman Empire. Because I feel like with the Ottoman Empire, we're, uh, we saw kind of what we're seeing in, in Iran right now is that when people actually, you know, people, people like these jihadis must want to live in kind of Islamic states on their caliphate with Sharia, but once people actually experience living in it, they realize how shitty it is. Sorry, I'm not allowed, I don't, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear or not. No, you can but swear. How, you can swear. I'm just seeing how bad it is. I'm, people, uh, people are complaining about the audio quality. I'm just trying to, uh, I'm trying to figure out. All right, hold on. Is this better? I don't know. I hear you perfectly. That's why I'm like trying to understand what they're talking about. Audio keeps cutting in and out. A bad connection, unintelligible. Um, how do we fix this? How do we fix this? Um, it's the first time I've ever dealt with this before. I don't know. Can you hear me now? Is it better? Guys, can you hear him now? We'll, we'll need some confirmation from the audience real quick before we move on. We'll just do a series of some audio tests. Uh, they're saying it's stuttering. It's the stream, not the call. Okay, it's a stream quality. It's a stream, not just a call. Wait, so it's not it's not you. Okay, better right now. Let's see. How about now? Are we back, guys? Are we okay? Better but not good. Okay, maybe what might be better? It could be my Wi-Fi is uh stuttering a bit. Let me turn on my hotspot on my phone. We'll try that. All right. One second. Give me one second, brother. I want to hear your perspective. I want to get everybody in here. Spot on. I'm just going to switch the uh, stream Wi-Fi. Man, sorry for you guys. I switched to a, a hotspot. Can everybody hear me better now? Are we good? Are we back on? Do like man. Does sound nice? Please. You know, I actually used to live in Kazakhstan. Really? Yeah, okay. Yeah. We're back, yeah, brother. Right, bro. We're back, Tartul. So, okay, Tartul, let's go. Right. Tell, or, so, sorry. I was talking about like uh, the Ottoman Empire and kind of what we're seeing in Iran right now, where like uh, kind of religious extremists, Muslim extremists, they kind of they dream of a caliphate and Sharia and stuff, but it's only once they live in it they realize how bad it is, and then they want to go back to kind of a more secular society. Because that, that's what we saw with the Ottoman Empire and what we're seeing right now with Iran as well. But obviously, you know, the regime has pretty much more from their own people. So I was wondering, do you think there's any way that we can kind of breed this radical Islam out of society? Not completely, but to the point where it doesn't threaten kind of the secular regimes in the Arab countries. Okay, for everybody who's typing in the chat that you can't understand what he was saying, I'll just I'll 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 paraphrase for him because I can hear him perfectly. And I just want to confirm, can you guys hear me okay right now? I'm just sorry, I'm gonna give them one sec one sec tile just to respond. And then I can just you can tell me what you want to say and I'll say it to them. Um, for anybody for anybody who was wondering, Tal was asking, okay, everybody can hear me fine, which is weird. I don't know why. I'm gonna turn down the volume of my computer slightly, so maybe They'll be able to hear you better because your your microphone is a little crunchy, but I don't think that's the issue. Um, I think it's the internet thing. Uh, Tal was asking, 
if he thinks if he was asking if he thinks or if I think we can root radical Islam out of society, right? Tal, is that what you were asking? Tal? Hello? Tal, can you hear me? Okay, Tal's gone right now. I don't know why. <laughs> He's here, but I can't hear him. Um, let me... Let me try to call him again. Tall, can you hear me? This is, we should just call this the technical difficulties show at this point. This is just the technical difficulties show. Tall, can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay. Sorry, I have no idea what's going on. Um, you were saying, well, you were talking about, uh, you were talking about the fact that you were asking me if, if I believe that we can root out radical Islam from the world, correct? Yeah, exactly. Look, I I don't know. It's for... I don't know what it was like growing up in Turkey. I, I mean, maybe you could tell us a little bit um, what it was like to grow up as a half Jew, half Muslim in Turkey. But my my family has been chased by radical... chased down by radical Islam for the last three generations documented and then for who fucking knows how long before that um it doesn't seem like there's any end in sight anytime soon and it seems like a bigger a bigger problem than just the jews it seems like it needs to be a world coalition to quell this danger that is radical islam but what, with what we're dealing right now with identity politics in the world and people being too afraid to actually call out what actually goes on in the world it seems like we'll never get to a point where you're able to talk about it. And it, 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 you have to have some sort of title or victim. You have to have a sort of, some sort of level of victim, uh, of, of being a victim to be able to speak on topics nowadays. And if you don't have that, you're not allowed to. You need to be a victim of something to talk about it. And certain victimization trumps other victimization. So it's, I don't really know. I don't really know to say that it's certain, but I do think that we might be able to quell it from the perspective of government control. And then slowly, slowly root it out through civilian populations. But I think through government control, via money and corruption, actually, ironically, you could potentially build a system where radical Islam is not at least at, in a leadership position in any, in any sort of powerful way. I don't know if that makes sense. What do you think about that? Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, in terms of, uh, like, like I said, uh, I'm from Turkey, so I can kind of give you examples of the Ottoman Empire. So you mentioned how the, the problem's not with the Jews. And in the Ottoman Empire, that was definitely the case, is that they had a much bigger problem with the Christians, like the Greek Orthodox or the Armenians or the Christians from the Balkan area. The Jews actually lived relatively nice lives considering they were under Islamic rule. Obviously, they, weren't, they were still second-class citizens. They had extra taxes to pay as what they call people of the book, but not Muslims, uh, if you decide not to convert. You're not killed, but you have to pay extra taxes, and there are certain rules and rights that you don't have. So from that perspective, it, it wasn't that bad living in the Ottoman Empire from what I heard from uh, my grandparents and the stories they told me about their parents as well. Uh, but in terms of rooting it out of society, I don't really know how it works. But because with the fall of the Ottoman Empire, that, that was obviously as a result of a war. So I, I don't think it would have happened if that wasn't the case. Like True. The, the only time I've seen radical Islam be destroyed is only through war. I've, no, I've never seen it happen through kind of, not, not a civil war, but like an uprising of the people within and then them changing their beliefs. A death, a death cult breeds death. And that's what radi radical Islam is. It's a death cult. It's a cult that revolves around death. You know, if you're if you're a kafir to Islam, you die. If you're this to Islam, you die. If you do this wrong, you die. It's death, death, death. Death is a heavy part of it. Martyrdom, death. You know, it's like there. Death is a huge part of it. A death cult breeds more death, and unfortunately, that's the only reason. To, the only way to combat radical Islam is via war, because it's the only language that they either understand or are or are able to submit to, and. Um, you know, I feel like there, somebody said in here, Islam is cancer. I think there needs to always be a distinction between radical Islam and Islam. There's a difference, in my opinion. Not everybody will agree with me on that, but I, 
I've met many too, too many amazing Muslim people in this world. And I have too many Muslim friends to say uh, wholeheartedly that it's a Muslim problem. It's a radical Muslim problem. And it needs to be addressed. I think the wider Muslim community appeases it and is okay with it. And that's also a problem. That makes them an element like radical as well. I'm curious to tell me a little bit about um, life in Turkey though, with people knowing that you were half Jew, especially within the Muslim community. Do people tr treat you any differently? Or were you accepted just normally like it was, like it was nothing? Me personally, I've never experienced any anti-Semitism in Turkey. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I, I live in Istanbul, which is a big, diverse, kind of westernized city. I don't know how, would, how would, it would be in the east of Turkey, where you're entering like uh, near the borders of Syria and Iraq and stuff. But in Istanbul, personally, it's been fine. Because, you know, I, I don't go around telling everyone, hey, I'm Jewish. But, you know, people can tell just from asking my name that I'm definitely not Turkish. So... Mm -hmm. I mean, in Turkey, it's very common that if you see uh, someone who speaks Turkish, looks Turkish, but his name doesn't sound Turkish, he's most likely a Jew. Hmm. But e even with that, I've never experienced any anti-Semitism in Turkey. So uh, I, I would say we're kind of going in a bad direction right now. You know, they were definitely... We, we, we also had mass protests on the street in support of Palestine straight after October 7th as well, you know, same as we've seen in the West. So I don't think that's really... Uh, we, we can really say... Turkey or Islam is a problem there, but with, with the current government, we're kind of heading towards a more Islamic government where, you know, whether he says it or not, the current president definitely, if he could, would like to implement Sharia. So I'm not sure how, how well we're going to do in that sense, if we're kind of going back towards uh, the time of the Ottoman Empire and against everything that Turkish nationalism, Turkish nationalism stood for. Yeah, that, that, that's my take on it. But I mean, me personally, I've never experienced any anti-Semitism in my life other than online, like on Twitter and stuff. But that's expected. Yeah, well, online when there's nobody, <clears throat> when there's no accountability, it's a lot easier to be. I mean, I get messages every day that are just horrific. Um, have you ever been to Israel? No, never. You know, I, I'm, I'm planning to. <clears throat> Do you know how to speak any Hebrew? Was your, were your, were your, your, your Jewish mom, was she ever in Israel? Uh, yeah, she went once. Do you know how to uh, speak Hebrew in any capacity? Not at all. I mean, no. uh, my, my family, they all spoke Ladino. Oh, cool. So my grandma spoke Ladino as well. Uh, she was, yeah, she, again, born and raised in Turkey. So <clears throat> my, my yeah. dad also speaks Ladino till this day. I'm, I'm kind of sad, actually, but uh, I don't know it. I mean, because my grandparents speak it. Mm -hmm. My my. My parents, well, my mom understands it, and me, nothing. So obviously that, 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 that part of, I guess, our culture has, has been lost. But yeah, I think yeah, you, no, pe I, people I, don't I understand how... I want to visit Israel more. Yeah, you, would you like to come and visit Israel someday? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I've even thought about moving there. It just, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I want to spend three years in the IDF. That's the only problem, so... Oh, well, how, how old are you? Uh, I'm 21. Okay, so yeah, right now, if you move, you'd have to enlist. First of all, there's ways out of it, but there's also ways where you could do shirut lumi, which is, uh, you know, like a national service. You don't have to necessarily be in the IDF. Um, there's also positions in the IDF that you could do to, uh, what's it called? To um, avoid being in a combat position, a shortened service. There's, there's a lot of ways. There's a lot of interesting ways. So don't let the IDF particular dissuade you from moving here. But um, I think you should definitely visit first. You should come for a visit. It'd be very yeah, cool for you for to come sure. see I the mean, place. With the IDF, is it something that requires kind of full-time commitment? Or what, would it be possible for me to kind of work on the side and do it at the same time? You if could. If that's the case, then I, I probably don't really mind. It depends on the position. The thing is, I, if you're a young 21-year-old man and you're fit, you're, you're most likely going to be drafted to a combat position. You need to, you would need to come up with a pretty good excuse to not be drafted. If you do shirut lumi, the national service, is a lot easier to work in conjunction with it. And if you do a non-combative position in the IDF, it's also pretty easy to find time to at least do a part-time job. A lot of people do a part-time job while they're doing that as well. So um, there's there's ways to get around it. If you actually are interested 
and you want to talk to me uh, like more about it, there's a program called uh, Machal. Um, I, I can try to put you in touch with someone there if it ever actually interests you. But I would recommend like first, first and foremost, try to come to Israel, like come experience the country, you know, come see the place. See how you yeah, jive with the people. Uh, I do have a few family members there. So I might Good. Get in touch with them, see if I can stay with them for a, a week or so. Amazing. Um, so yeah, come come experience the place first and then figure out uh, whether you like it or not. And see... Is, is not knowing Hebrew that big of a problem? Because no. I speak English and Russian. So. No, no, no. If you speak Russian, you'll be just fine in Israel. There's so many fucking Russians here. Um, but right. no, if you speak English, you'll be more than fine in Tel Aviv and in Jerusalem. Uh, so nothing to worry about in that aspect. Tal, pleasure to talk to you, buddy. It's a pleasure to nice meet you. Me Keep in touch, man. Happy that you're a part of the community. It's very cool to hear from you. Very interesting That's story. That organization, Mahal. Right? Mahal. M-A-H-A-L. Yeah, M-A-H-A-L. Mahal. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay. yeah, man. Anything else you need, just let me know. See ya, brother. Um, I think we'll bring on Israel Tavor here uh, for... Uh, last call before we get off and then guys I just want to remind you join the discord community right now folks join the discord community right now folks please now 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 ASA drop me 19 great British pounds bring us up to $50 just short of $50 $48 on stream tonight looking crisp honey Deliciously 70s with that shirt open at Manfur. How's bubbly? Love you to you all. Thanks, Asa. Appreciate you always. That's the chest hair. I just line my necklace right in between my chest hair. That's how I do it. Uh, Grandma's doing good. We're going into Passover. So she's a bit stressed. Everyone's stressed. They're cleaning. But um, that's what we're going to do. Let me try to reconnect to the Wi Fi. Can you guys hear me better now? Very nice. Can you hear me better now? I'm curious if you can hear my audio. Am I good? I don't know how to reboot the Wi-Fi where I'm at right now. I just, I'm reconnecting between my phone to my uh, hotspot. Thank you, Daryl. Said I'm looking very handsome. Can you guys hear me? Okay, we're good. We're back on track. Ladies, gentlemen, please, 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 join the Discord. Join the Discord community right about now, folks. Join the Discord community. And after this live stream, which we're going to end fairly soon, we are going to hop into the Discord chat, and we are going to talk in the lounge all together. It's going to be a fun fucking time. But before we end that, we're going to call friend of the show, Community leader at this point. Uh, I would like to call him supreme regime leader of the traveling clack community. Dictator of love. Somebody I will be eating knafe with hopefully this Saturday. Very excited for it. The one, the only, the handsome, the French. Ladies and gentlemen, friend of the show, Israel Taveur. Bonjour, mon ami. Bonjour. Uh, why I'm taking a German accent because I heard I was the dictator of some kind of... Uh, thing. Yes, you're the dictator of the Klatt regime. Uh, je, m'appelle du, je m'appelle du fromage. Je, uh, je tends, je tends de fromage. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Qu'est-ce que c'est? Qu'est-ce que c'est? Uh, you just said I would like to lick your, uh, your asshole. So That's not what I said. That's not what I said. <laughs> this sneaky, this very sneaky Jill. I put them on the call. It's very sneaky. Exactly. Uh, yes, there's a few uh, things. Uh, some uh, thing uh, about the uh, Iran. I apo- uh, by the way, I, I owe you an apology. Last time you, you called on the show, you were on for yeah. 25 minutes. It was the middle of the night, and I fell asleep. If I remember correctly, I during the conversation, yeah. I apologize. <laughs> I'm sorry about it that. Reminded, it reminded me of every time I had sex with a woman. <laughs> Israel Tavor, ladies and gentlemen, give a round of claps. 
for Israel Tavor, ladies and gentlemen, get some fucking claps in the goddamn chat for this man. Okay, hit us up with your thoughts on Iran while we clap you away. Yeah, uh, well, the, their, uh, their uh, kind of weird attack on Israel, they actually gave us the best uh, card in the poker game because, as you said uh, earlier, they kind of, because they were so afraid of this global war that could uh, uh, start, uh, now I think, as you said, the U.S. are saying, okay, go to Rafah, do whatever you want, but don't attack uh, Iran. So uh, at the end, it could be a positive thing. It gave us some uh, 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 diplomatic uh, strength. Uh, number two, I have been talking to uh, people from Iran uh, quite a lot recently. I will show you how, how I did it. Uh, yesterday, I had a 45-minute uh, conversation with a, a guy called Ali in, uh, in Iran. And um, it was very interesting because they don't want any war, obviously. He lives in Tehran, and he was telling me that when uh, their government attacked Israel, uh, his father, who lives outside of Tehran, told him, get out of Tehran, something could happen. He said, no, I'm not going to uh, leave Tehran, not because he was uh, uh, sure that their government would protect them. He says, I don't think Israelis are going to try to kill us. That's not the way Israelis are. So even over there, they understood uh, that we were not warmongers. And uh, they were, you felt almost sorry for what their government was saying. He says the general feeling is uh, even, um, this is the interesting part, even the religious people in Iran are fed up with their own government. Even the religious section of the society, if for them it went too, too far. So that was very interesting, and I think you could do like a video with people from Iran, of course, blurring them, and uh, but that could be uh, interesting. You gotta tell uh, me, you gotta tell me about this on Saturday, because actually yesterday I went down to the south of Israel with an Iranian. She, one of the people on the group, she was from Iran. She grew up in yeah. the Islamic Republic, and when we took her to the Nova Festival, she was broken, man. She was broken, and she was such a sweet yes. person. And she wanted me to. She wanted me and everybody to know that the, the Iranian people do not stand with the Islamic the Islamic regime of Iran in any capacity. Yeah. So um, uh, then, when you were talking about a lot of Palestinians being from Egypt, you're correct. The most famous one is actually Yasser Arafat, who was born in Cairo. Uh, I was reading about his father. His father actually tried to claim land in Egypt, saying it was his. Maybe it was, but the court uh, at that time ruled otherwise. So, uh, yes. Um, and there's something I did not agree with you, because sometimes, my love, we can have a little uh, disagreement. Oh la la, um, getting spicy for yes. friends. Uh, I don't think the right of return should to everyone. And I think your solution, like what happens in the UAE, cannot fit uh, our uh, situation and narrative because in UAE people come uh, to work uh, over there do not have a national claim to the UAE so it makes a huge difference compared to what we have uh, now uh, we maybe we could uh, annex the entire place I think also we need to still move towards a better democracy there's a way for this. Uh, maybe I'm naive, you could uh, say that. Uh, but I think we should not stop focusing on this um, aspect. Uh, even if someone, sometimes it's very uh, discouraging to see what, uh, what happens here. But I think you, we should focus on uh, those who still live here have their full rights in one way or another. Uh, but for those refugees, that are in uh, Jordan, uh, Lebanon, Syria, they have to integrate in the local societies over there. They should not get a right of uh, return per se. Um, and also one thing that is interesting, the Palestinian birth rate in the West Bank is almost uh, um, the same and even lower than the Israeli one. So the demographic, demographic balance is not in danger. 
There's an exception with Gaza, which is a lot uh, different. And um, for the, our friend from uh, Turkey, he could be a spokesperson for the Israeli army in Turkish. That could be uh, uh, interesting. And uh, my last uh, thought is concerning uh, Bassem Youssef. I don't know if you know that uh, yeah, of course. Uh, piece of shit. Yeah. Uh, and is going lower and lower every time. Is uh, not even uh, uh, being balanced in some kind of way. Is not even hiding. Is uh, a liar. Is a fucked up. Uh, like I wanted to make a video like with facts, carrying everything he said. In one of the first videos he did after October 7th, he says, "Oh, you know, Zionism was actually invent invented by the British that wanted to get rid of their Jews." That's what he said. He said, "What?" And the journalist in front of that uh, uh, asshole said nothing. He said nothing. You're like, mm, I, I cannot believe this. And he did another uh, video uh, very recently, maybe yesterday, today or yesterday, with uh, that British guy called uh, Constantine, which is uh, a pretty uh, okay guy. And um, he was like uh, justifying basically October 7th. And at the same time, oh, I don't agree with the massacre. But. Uh, uh, it, it was justified, basically. Uh, the conditions and all that bullshit, he would justify it. And uh, we have to do something about that uh, piece of shit. Not because of he's Egyptian, not because he's Arab, not because he's Muslim, just because he doesn't tell the truth. That's uh, the big distinction. I don't care if he could be called Abbas El Youssef or uh, François Langlois or whatever uh, fucked up name uh, we can make up. It's uh, with a lot, and even. If an Israeli says a lie, it's the same thing. We should always fight for the truth, um, whether it fits our narrative or not. A couple of things I want to respond to with what with Bassem Youssef. Uh, I don't. I also am with you. I have no fucking idea how or why he's being platformed the way that he is, considering he is Egyptian, a comedian, and a rife anti-Semite slash anti-Israel. He, I think the reason why people like Piers Morgan and um, the Lex Friedman like are platforming him is because on a surface level, he gives you this faux identity that he's critical of both sides because he's like, I'm anti-Hamas and my wife is Palestinian, but I don't hate Israel. But he is pro-Hamas. He's pro-Palestinian in every, in every way, way, shape or turn. You know, he doesn't hide from it at all. And he's extremely... Maybe, maybe because he makes views, I, but I, I guess, and that's, but that's the real reality with, with all these shows anyways, they keep platforming him as, they see him as a moneymaker, it's nothing more than that, but it's not like the guy is intelligent, he's, he's a hypocrite, and uh, he's actually quite dumb, um, and as for um, what you were talking about with the Iranian response, remind me again what, what you were saying, um, just give me the... Great hand in this big poker game to oh, uh, go on. Yeah, on I, I couldn't agree more. And I saw, I saw, um, I can't remember whose it was. It might have been Tom Nash's analysis saying that if we're smart, we won't attack anytime soon. We need to drive, yeah. we need to drive them crazy. And it's not just driving the Islamic Republic crazy. In a way, it's very sad to hear this. But I think if we drive the Iranian public crazy, not knowing when Israel is going to attack. We could potentially collapse the country or collapse an element of the country's morale um, without yeah. ever touching it. Yeah, yeah, and that would be us. I think we should do something, but maybe in a way that we uh, don't even know uh, what it is now. So uh, uh, we have to be very, very smart about this. Uh, this is uh, uh, important. I agree, man. Israel Tavor. Lovely speaking to yeah. you. Have a wonderful end of your week. Have a Shabbat Shalom, my brother. And we will see each other Shabbat this Shalom. weekend, I hope. Yeah. See you, brother. Thanks Have for everything. Great evening. You too, brother. Bye. You too. Guys, uh, I want to mention this again. Please, please, please join the Discord link. I keep popping it in. We are about to join the Discord link. Everyone together from this stream, everybody who's in the Discord group right now, we're going to join the lounge. There's a lounge room inside of the Discord group where we can all chat. 
It'll be a big chat. I'm going to be in there myself. We're all going to sit there. We're going to talk. We're going to, we're going to talk. We're going to share some ideas. We'll, we'll talk about the actual Discord group. Click the link. Make an account. And join the lounge group so we can talk. Um, I love you guys very much. Thanks for another amazing week of support. We made $48 in Super Chats tonight. That's going to go a long way to supporting the channel. Um, I appreciate you guys. I love you so much. Uh, and that's it. That's all I want to say. Shabbat Shalom. Tomorrow's Shabbat. Have a happy Shabbat. And I will see you guys on Sunday. I'm recording a podcast. So the time might be a little bit later when I start this one. Because I've been, I've been invited to a podcast in Tel Aviv that I'm going to be recording. But uh, I'll, be, I'll be on on Sunday. Probably maybe around 9 p.m. Israel time instead of uh, what I thought. Or maybe 10 p.m. Israel time. Maybe a little bit later than usual. Okay? Love you guys. See ya on Discord. Bye-bye, folks. I love ya. I long